And how about that? <laughs> I could use a Constance on the account. Who do we have showing up here? Who do we have on the team? I have this champion already, but I'm happy to get this champion at A1. Because the A1 really brings the champion's kit to life. Ladies and gents, what is going on? It is go time. This is Mortar Mike, and this is yet another, another Watch Your Girls video. I'm back and still making content. I'm just doing pool videos for the weekend here because we're almost done with the content that I've been making in my business. Um, we got maybe about five more days or so, but I know that the Mortar Codex is on the way. My favorite part of content in the game is less than 24 hours out, so. It's gonna start soon. Um, I'm looking to see what Boreas has to bring to the table. I don't think he's the first boss that shows up in it, but I'm looking forward to it. But today is a day of summon. So I went and did a little bit of homework just to make sure. I do want to pull a few under this banner. Yeah, it's a tiny, tiny chance I get them, but hey, worth a shot. But my main focus today are the divine. I have three of them. I wanted to make sure I was 100% right in that it wasn't a banner that also allowed you to use divines. If it was, then I was saving it for that. But since it isn't, I'll just use them this way also. Um, and I guess right before that, just a wee I bit here true. because I, no, not there. Just a wee bit because I still hold true to this. The most important thing to have outside of the champions is typically gonna be the, um, the artifacts that you give them. Gear, of course, is very important as well, but if you've noticed, most of the content we played with recently um, in the Mortal Codex, the artifacts really make a huge impact on whether your team can do better. So this boss is a perfect example. Here's a temple. Let's see if we get something nice. Okay, Euphoric Orb, Elysian Epitaph, and Frigid Flame. I'm slowly getting my Zilla to off of Frigid Flame. I'm realizing it's not doing as well as it should for Guild Boss. Other content is wonderful, because she can stay away and still do good damage. Okay, cool. Now let's get into the summons. I told you guys I wanted to be quick about this and get straight to work. So first I'll do the regulars here. If I use the gems, yeah, that'll give me the nine. Okay, cool. I'll just burn all of them just to do it because I plan on restocking soon. And how about that? <laughs> It'd be dope if it was a Constance. I could use a Constance on the account. I have a Laura. I've actually been using her pretty well. Who do we have showing up here? Who do we have on the team? Number nine. Ooh, a video. Oh, this is Neza. Okay, so this is good. This is good. I'm happy to have this champion. I have this champion already, but I'm happy to get this champion at A1. I will show you because the A1 really brings the champion's kit to life. A lot of people are like, yeah, they don't like this champion. They don't feel like they do really good damage. But one thing that this champion does really well, if they can take one or two hits, they have really good survivability for a fighter. Not S tier, amazing and such, but I'll show you guys real quick. See that? I mean, you saw the video yesterday, I had a nice pull. I think that was within, what, 30, 40 summons? This was within the first 10 today. And let me get these gems real quick. How about that? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's a dope picture. I know that's not intentional, that's just fire. That's so fire. All right, dope. So I'll talk about it, that at the end. I was, that's just dope. I mean, shout out to y'all for thinking a little things through. It's kind of cool. We got Kinez in there. Nice. So I'm gonna still go with the other ones because I want a chance to get a Constance. Constance is really, really useful in a lot of content. It's also really good in the Conqueror boss of getting all your other champs extra damage. If I'm not mistaken, does you get healing also? Um, awesome champ. How about that though? I mean, first team, we got some glimmer. I mean, they got an epic here. I still want my soul day. <laughs> I need for her to show up. Whenever, 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 whenever you're ready. No rush. I mean, but that's rush. That's all I wanted to do here so I can burn singles and then a 10. And yeah, I know the other banners coming up. Like I said, I'm gonna restock and be ready for that one. That one I'm actually gonna put a little bit more into to get. Um, but I mean, can you blame me? This past two videos, I've already gotten, you know, two goals in the books. And they were good ones. They're ones that I enjoy using. Where did I get in the one for yesterday? Did I have a complete brain fart? Oh yeah, my favorite defender in the game. You can watch the video and see for yourself. <laughs> so I'm burning these two, then I'm gonna do a temple, then we're going to divine. I would say a 2X banner is a pretty good banner. 
to pull the vines on because you have like what a 12% chance? It's a pretty high chance of pulling um, you know, per shard, per summon, per summon. Right, I think that's to the 10. All right, and here's a 10 pull. Got us attacks. Good to have attacks. Tax is all right in this game. <laughs> All right, now we shift on over to the divines and also I'll show you this too, just so you see it. I'm doing pretty good on my ancients right now. I got 18 of those bad boys and it looks like I'm racking up, well, I'm got seven days left on other thing. So I'm racking up pretty nicely, but let's get into here. This is what I've been waiting for. Let's see if we get some dope stuff. It'd be dope if Constance came through this one too. First one is an epic. Please just be in the soul day. <laughs> <laughs> I just got his little brother a few minutes ago, like a minute ago, so good. I don't know if he's really his little brother, I just called him that. Next up. Okay, another epic. I'll take it, I'll take it. 12% has failed me. <laughs> this is good. Um, I, I only use her for her cost regen, which is wonderful, but I'd be interested to see if her uh, awakenings do something different for us. So nice. Last but not least, the last summon I planned on doing. Some fancy taps here and tap it. It did not work. I should have done some spicy hand rolls. That would have been nice. <laughs> Everybody's favorite epic champion, Idril. Gotta have her at A5. Just, you, you guys already know how amazing she is. Do I need to expound on how great this champion is? <laughs> I wanna know what champions are you guys planning on using against Boreas? Now, here's the thing, you can't nerf the boss. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> but it looks like the big thing is point single target damage, if I'm not mistaken. Put full screen here. Birth from the icy silence of the deep, and then and then nerf. What is that? Um, <laughs> the king of ice elementals came into being after gaining vast knowledge, as far from being profound, experienced profound solitude, and sought to create a world of his own kind. Now the frost kind of kids are about to come. Friendly face off, new board rift mount. I actually got my first six gems for this. Oh, speaking of that, I have to show you something in Guild of the Guild. <clears throat> this is about to be a rapid Guild of the Guild. Crowdor, the fusion's coming. It's a really good defender, it's really useful. This is what I wanted to show y'all. See, y'all know I like playing Guild of the Guild, right? I like to get an eight zero every time I play. I think the last one we just did, I did two eight zeros or an eight zero and a seven one. I just got the one, the one demon, the one um, option for attacking that I wanted for months. Mm -hmm. see, undoubtedly, probably my favorite one in the entire game. Now that I have them. <laughs> I had some other options before that I thought were my favorite, but this dude's damage is so freaking nice. Um, the attack only says A, sure, but you can send these guys out in groups of twos and they do absurd damage because he does damage in a giant T section. So his goal is not necessarily to kill the defender, but to kill everybody around the defender and eventually he'll end up killing the defender too. But this guy does really good AOE damage. It's all magical damage, of course. He's, you know, he's a bookkeeper, he's a wizard. Um, but it's really, really, really lovely damage. Um, it's really good for killing off everything around the defender that's trying to support it. So that defender is e either easier to kill or easier to override because there's no more damage around. Really, really good champion. I want to show it. Oh, attacking the cross shape essentially kills everyone around the tank and then the tank. <laughs> As I said, double drops. See, this is good. See, this is what I like when people are thinking the same thing. Double drops sink their attack together. They one shot uses if not um, squishy adjacent to defense. Uses of no squishy adjacent to defense. That's fine. Using a mob packs and crosses or side by side preferably with shooters. Nice Harry Potter. Cheat code for guilt. See, cheat code for guilt. Well, you get a thumbs up for that one. That's a fact. But yeah, I mean, high splash damage, these enemies that clumped together. And I'm concerned that this is gonna be a Russia or Ukraine topic because Ember killed everyone you could put it alone. Yeah, so there's a video that I did with Jack Tricken. I'm gonna put it up um, here. No, 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 you know, I'm sorry, I can't put it up here. It was one of his videos. It was a live stream he did. He was doing Guild v Guild and he was using him and it was a, um, it was a stronghold setup. And in the stronghold setup, he sent just this champion, just that bookkeeper guy, and the bookkeeper guy killed the entire team by himself. <laughs> the reason why I say that is really good because before I had this guy, my main attempt of getting really good damage quickly is 
They're really good. The Unalives. It is the Unalives. <laughs> These guys do insanely good damage, but if I'm not mistaken, they, yeah, they do AOE magical damage, but it's good because if you have the um, bookkeeper, you don't have to worry about losing these champs as soon as you get the high damage, which is really good damage. Probably, it's, it's insanely good damage, especially when you send four at once. Now I have a champion that can survive, take a few hits, do it more than once, gonna be happy. There we have it. I think that's enough for this video. I appreciate y'all. My goal is to put this thing out quickly so y'all can have an awesome day today. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment. Who have you guys been pulling? I'm feeling good. Oh, and I said I was gonna show it, this is why I think Kaneza is worth bragging about. So check it out. I am one of the people that says Kaneza is not a bad champion. If you got it, don't be one of those people saying, oh, she's not awesome, such and such and such. So do a really, really, really simple overview of the kit. Passive skill would be nice if I could get a Salazar. So her basic attack does two hit, is a two hitter. It can do up to, I think it's 60% each time, so 120% uh, every time she does an attack. If you give her the Watch Guard's Ambition, which is a legendary one, it's this one right here. If you give her that one, she has a chance to do the attack more often. And whenever she does her attack, she has a chance to get Chi every time she does a basic attack, which is a talent. So Trickery and Dodge also has a 100% chance of gaining one key stack. I'm gonna show you why that's important later. Um, originally has a 50% chance of dodge, which means she just evades the attack. She doesn't take any damage, anything, immune to any damage from it. Every 100 attack speed, she gets an extra four. If I'm not mistaken, that goes up to an extra five. And I have mine at a pretty decent speed, but yeah, so it's like 350 or so. She's able to completely ignore damage. And it gets to a pretty nice amount when you get her really fast, which is nice. And the other passive here enhances her next basic attack upon triggering dodge. This is what I like about her. Every time she dodges, she does a counter attack, which is really good damage. Each stack of key makes basic attack and enhanced basic attack ignore 12% of their defense. She normally has up to three key stacks. So that's 36% defense ignored when she does his attack. And she attacks pretty quickly, which is nice. And it looks like it goes up even more, another 3%, so it'd be 15%, and then she could do 240% damage. Very nice. Now, the ultimate consumes all key with each stack dealing 125% damage to enemies in range one time. Afterward, deals an additional 400% damage one time. So this is like a one-two attack on the enemy that's in front of her. It's really good damage. It can get to 500% damage, 500 or 500, then an extra 20% per key. So that gets crazy numbers. So that could mean it would be 100 and what, 145? The cost goes down to 500, so she does it often. So she's one of those champions that would do really good with the, it's not Infernal Roar, this one. Soulbound Arcana, she'd be really good for this one because she just keeps getting stronger and stronger and she avoids attack. Last but not least, this is why I said it was amazing. Passive skills are bonus. Um, the damage that Surgeon Ward deals by consuming a stack of key increases by 120%. Consuming a stack of key. She consumes three of them. That's insane good damage. So I'll be interested to use her if I can get Salazar in there too. But here's why I think it is really good. This, each stack of key restores 3% HP per second. Per second. She can have three at once. This doesn't say while she's attacking, it doesn't say while she's dodging, it's per second. If you cannot kill her quickly, she will probably take a single hit, dodge something, and kill whatever was attacking her. And then heal back up to full health. So this is a fighter that essentially doesn't need nearly as much um, support from a healer. When there's not combat going on, that's a better way to put it. Also, I've seen her be really nice because she's dodged attacks in different pieces of content, like in the campaign, you put her in areas where she just does good damage and then you need somebody to just stall a little bit. She does a really good job of stalling. This is gonna be great because she's gonna get more health back now. So I'm happy about it. But I think every champion, you really wanna gauge how good the champion is at their A1. When they go higher, sure that's better, but A1 seems to be the sweet spot where most champions really start to come to life in their kits. Um, I think the majority of the champions in the game, A1's are, one, are like one of the best spots uh, of awakening for them because it finally puts that last little piece that should have been in the kit, in the kit, and then the rest is just icing on the cake. This has been your boy Mortal Mike. It is now getting dark outside while I'm making the content. <laughs> and I think I just did something to mess up something on my computer. Yeah, I messed up my computer. <laughs> well, this has been your boy Mortal Mike. I hope you have an awesome time. Take care. See you guys soon. It's go time, but now it's time to go. See y'all guys soon. Oh, give me like five more days. I may take a little bit more of a break to get this stuff knocked out for you guys. 
um, and get more stuff knocked out between you know my business. But when I get that finished, I'm gonna have a lot more time during the month of March to talk about what we're doing. And I cannot wait to go against Boreas. But until then, y'all have a good time. I will see y'all soon. Peace.